keeping up with our motto that learning be a joy and teaching a pleasure. Here we are with the remote teaching and learning process to bridge the gap. Happy learning students! In the previous session, we have studied about the natural resource, air. Today, I am going to cover water and land. Let us start with water. Picture shows the usage of water for different purposes in our day-to-day -day life. We use water for drinking, cooking, bathing, washing clothes and utensils, mopping the floor, etc. It is almost impossible for us to spend even a single day without water. We need to drink 3 to 4 liters of water every day so that all our bodily functions run smoothly. Thus, water is very important. Hydrogen gas upon burning in air combines with oxygen and water is formed. All the biochemical processes which occur in plants and animals require water to function. This figure shows the proportion of water and land on the earth. You can see over here 71% of the earth is covered by water whereas only 29% is covered by land. Now let us see how all the water on earth is further divided. This green and blue portion this area shows all the water which is present on the earth. Out of the total water available, 97% is saline water, that is water of seas and oceans. Only 3%, this remaining 3% water is fresh water. Now let us see how this fresh water is further divided. This area this area shows the total fresh water available on the earth. 68.7% of this total fresh water is in the form of ice caps and glaciers. 30.1% is in the form of ground water. 0.9% is in other forms. And only 0.3% is in the form of surface water, that is water available for drinking. This surface water is further divided as shown in this picture. This area shows the total surface water. 87% of this surface water is in the form of lakes. 11% is in the form of swamps. Swamps means an area of low-lying uncultivated ground where water collects. And only 2% is in the form of rivers. We use water in large quantities. We have learnt that water on the earth is regulated through the water cycle. This picture shows the water cycle. Water evaporates and then further condense and return back to the earth in the form of rain. The water vapor formed from the oceans is the main source of water in water cycle. It gets converted into rain creating fresh water sources on the earth. We get water from natural resources such as streams, rivers, ponds, springs and lakes. 
man also dig wells and bore wells to lift the ground water. Due to uncontrolled use of water for an increasing population, industry and farming, it is now in short supply. Water scarcity has become a serious problem. We shall remember following things while using water. Don't waste water. Use it sparingly and judicially. Store water for rainwater harvesting. Reuse, reduce and recycle should be followed. These three words are very important to understand. Reuse, reduce and recycle. Reduce. You can see in this picture, reduce as the picture indicates and the word also that to use less water. For example, take sh shorter showers, turn off the water while soaping hands and brushing teeth. Second one is reuse. Reuse the water from the old drinking bottles or you can also reuse the water that you have used for washing the vegetables to water the plants. And the third one is recycle. The process of reusing the treated waste water is called recycling the water. For example, grey water. Grey water is the waste water that doesn't contain any sewage. That is, the relatively clean waste water from baths, sinks, washing machines and other kitchen appliances. This clean waste water can be treated and it can be reused again, say for example for flushing the toilets. So this way water can be recycled and used again. Now let us start with land. Land is an important resource seen in the form of stones, soil, big rocks, etc. All terrestrial animals including man live on land. We make use of plants and animals in the forest that grow on land. The minerals, crude oil and natural gas obtained from the earth are very important for us. It means that land is an important resource. Land is also used for farming, making roads, making houses, mining etc. So now let us see exactly what land is made up of. Picture shows the different layers of land. Let us see all these layers one by one. The topmost layer of the soil is formed by decomposition of remains of plants and animals. This layer is called humus. Below humus, land is full of sand, soil, small stones, worms or insects that forms the immature soil. Under the immature soil, there is a layer of soil and small rocks. You can see the size of rocks is gradually increasing as we are going in the downward direction. And finally, the fourth layer is called bedrock. There is a bedrock with minerals. That means this layer contains minerals. And the proportion of soil decreases and that of the rocks increases. The constituents of soil means what the soil is made up of. There are two constituents of soil. 
abiotic. The non-living constituents of soil are called abiotic constituents. For example, particles of soil, sand, rock, stones, etc. And the living constituent of soil are called biotic constituents. Example, microbes, bacteria, unicellular organisms, protozoa, fungi, algae, small insects, ants, termites, worms, etc. The process of soil formation is a natural process and takes about a thousand years for a 2.5 cm thick layer of mature soil to form. Due to the heat, cold, wind and rain, the bedrock breaks down into pieces. Stones, sand and soil are formed from these pieces. Living things use air, water and land available on earth and so does man. However, the portion of these resources that are actually put to use are very small as compared to the whole earth. For this, look at the following table. Out of total air, only 21% is oxygen. Out of the total water available on the earth, only 0.3% is in the form of fresh water that is the water available for drinking. Out of the total portion of the earth only 29% comprises of land. Even in the small proportions the resources shown in this table are sufficient for all the living things. Only it is very necessary for man to control his greed. In other words, he must use these resources judicially with the awareness that they are meant for all the other living things and not just for mankind. Indian Meteorological Department It was established in 1875. The main function of Indian Meteorological Department is to observe the weather and to make weather forecasts. It also conducts research related to changes in weather and studies the developments related to global warming. This is all about Chapter 1 Natural Resources, Air, Water and Land. In the next session, we will start with Chapter 2 the living world. Thank you so much.